There is an emerging class of devices that provide both touch and mouse capabilities, potentially offering the advantages of each device as a way to support mobile and desktop tasks. Examples include the Microsoft Surface and the Lenovo Yoga. Unfortunately, interfaces for hybrid devices are either difficult to use or expensive to produce. Developers either provide standard point-and-click interfaces, which become problematic when targets are small and densely arranged, or developers implement an entirely alternate interface that is optimized for touch. The difficulty of supporting these two modalities in tandem can limit the potential of these hybrid devices. To address this problem, we implemented sliding widgets across the Windows 8 desktop. Sliding widgets are touchscreen widgets which allow users to activate controls by sliding a movable element. Sliding widgets were first proposed in the human-computer interaction literature, but were only developed to work with isolated examples. In this work, we scale sliding widgets to the desktop. We do this using Prefab, a system that reverse engineers interfaces using only the pixels of existing applications. Specifically, we copy the pixels of an existing interface from a source window. We then interpret these pixels using Prefab. <coughs> using this interpretations, we overlay our sliding widgets in a separate window. Interactions with the sliding widgets are then mapped back to the source window as standard mouse-based input. In this first example, we show how elements in the Adobe Reader dialog box are automatically replaced with sliding widgets. Elements in the application are optimized for touch by converting them into sliding widgets. Here, the tiny buttons in the original spinner widget makes touchscreen interaction difficult. In contrast, converting the spinner into a sliding widget improves the interaction. Enhancing applications with sliding widgets can allow for efficient interactions. In Skype, for example, a user can enable or disable Skype notifications using a single swipe, as opposed to going through each checkbox individually. Our technique can enhance any application in the user's desktop. Our enhancement can be toggled on or off to help people interact with existing interfaces using either touch or the mouse. For example, we can enable sliding widgets when a user interacts with a hybrid device using touch, and we can disable it once the user starts using the mouse. Similarly, we can disable sliding widgets when the user is in laptop mode, and we can enable it when the user switches to tablet mode. Our technique also allows the sliding widgets to match the appearance of the underlying interface. In this side-by-side -side comparison, Notice that the dimensions and visual design of the original interface on the left are matched by the sliding widgets on the right. Similarly, this example shows how our sliding widgets adapt to the visual style of this Gmail interface. A major challenge is defining sliding widgets that work within the same interface as mouse-based widgets. Consider this spinner widget which illustrates a common scenario where a spinner controls the contents of an adjacent text box. The spinner can be replaced with a sliding widget, but it becomes difficult to manipulate the text box directly given how sliding widgets leverage the entire contact area of touch input. The touch here also overlaps the text field for which area cursor input is undefined. To address this ambiguity, we develop a strategy for gracefully degrading from a contact area to a standard point cursor. When a user dwells over an element, we present a callout showing the occluded screen area. Slow, fine-tuning movements are treated as pointing, and fast, dragging movements manipulate the sliding widgets. This makes it possible to swiftly confirm a sliding widget without eliminating the precise control of a pointer. Because our sliding widgets work from the pixels of an existing interface at runtime, interactions with the sliding widget need to be mapped back to its underlying element. When someone interacts with a sliding widget, our system automatically redirects input to the target element. For example, holding down on a sliding button is treated like a rollover, allowing the user to view tooltips. Similarly, Sliding a button sends a click event to the underlying target. 
We have used pixel-based methods to implement sliding widgets across the Windows 8 desktop. By exploring this system, our hope is to help more interaction research in escaping the lab, putting it into the hands of end-users who stand to benefit from the field's rich innovation.